from San Francisco. It's the Cube covering VMware Radio 2019. Brought to you by VMware. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special Cube conversation here in San Francisco for VMware's radio event. Their top engineers are here. Uh, for once a year, get together and show them the best stuff roadmap. Uh, we've got two great guests here. We've got Mike DiPetrillo, who's the Senior Director of Blockchain for VMware. We're going to hear where their journey is, where they've come from and gone to today, where they are up, up to. And Pratima Gluckman, Engineering Leader, Blockchain Engineering, both with VMware. Great to see you guys. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate uh, spending the time. My favorite topic, blockchain. Thank Our you. favorite topic too. Thanks <laughs> for joining me. So, uh, Mike, let's start with you. Um, take us through where you guys are now, because we talked about a year ago, just getting the, putting the team together. You were here last year at Radio, kind of getting some you know, core momentum. Where have you guys come from and where are you now? Yeah, it's been quite a journey. You know, over the past five years, we've been doing a lot of research. That research culminated in an open source project called Project Concord that we announced last year. Then we wrapped uh, some commercial offerings around it, around really the operational side. How do you operate a blockchain at scale in an enterprise setting? Uh, we introduced that as VMware blockchain. So very descriptive on the naming. And it really focuses on three core things. Enterprise grade, decentralized trust, not distributed trust, but really decentralized trust. So being able to deploy it across multiple different cloud environments as well as on-prem. It concentrates on robust day two operations. How do you operate it at scale in an enterprise setting? How do you deal with stuff like GDPR, the right to be forgotten, you know, data sovereignty issues, things like that, which is much different than other blockchains. And then the third thing is really being developer friendly. Last year we were uh, fully Ethereum compatible. We had the Ethereum language sitting on top of our blockchain. Uh, since then we've added support for DAML uh, from Digital Assets, so another language, and we're adding more and more languages so that developers can develop in the frameworks that they're used to on the best uh, scalable you know, enterprise support. So bringing some DevOps mojo concepts to blockchain. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so how about the demo you guys did, you did on stage, I want to yeah. get to that, because that's a real use case. So again, R&D, conceptual, years of research, starting to put it together, making some progress on developer, so the solutions that you guys presented were real. Take us through that. So the Ocean Plastics demo that we talked about at radio um, basically solves this problem of you know, just the plastics polluti polluting our uh, oceans today. So if you look at the numbers, they're staggering. And the BPA that you actually uh, consume you know, in fish, <laughs> it's pretty scary. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, it's, it's been predicted that we'll have more plastic in our oceans than fish by 2050. And one of the things Dell is trying to do is clean up the environment. Mm -hmm. And they're building these reusable trays or packaging material for their Dell laptops. And so this use case was uh, providing them that functionality. And if you look at Dell, they've, you know, they have a massive supply chain. They've got hundreds and thousands of vendors that you know, they use disparate systems that don't actually talk to each other. They've got complicated workflows. There's also a lot of um, corruption in their supply chain. And one of the things that can really solve all, a lot of those problems is VMware blockchain. And uh, they have an instance running on our service, which runs on VMC on AWS. And I walked through the demo of just going through an aggregator to getting to a manufacturer and then assembling these laptops with the trays and shipping them off to a so consumer. So this was something that we covered at Dell Technology World. I just want to point out for the folks watching. Dell's taking recycled material from the ocean, plastic, mm -hmm. using it as materials into their laptops as a part of sustainability. So yeah. a great business you know, outcome mm -hmm. for Dell. The supply chain piece is interesting. So you guys are using blockchain to track the acquisition of the plastic out of the ocean yes. to manufacturing, yes. end to end. Yes, yep. end to end, yes. Using VMware blockchain. Yes. And so who, you co just who coded this up? <laughs> it was actually Dell. <laughs> Dell developers Del? uh, coded it up. So they, they coded it up, they took two weeks to code it. Um, we had absolutely no support issues that came our way which really talks about the ease of use of our platform and you know, just the applications that run on How does someone get involved real quick? Get the plug for the, how someone joins the VMware Blockchain initiative. Yes, yeah, so VMware Blockchain is a managed service offering from us, so it's a licensed you know, product. If they're interested, they can go to uh, vmware.com slash blockchain or email us at blockchain-info at vmware.com. Get it signed up on the beta. We have an active beta. We have lots of enterprise customers all around the planet. Uh, using it today, you know, at scale. Is it so a free service or is there a license, paid license? There will be a paid license for it. You know, we're in beta right now, okay. so beta's free, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, uh, that's what I want to get to. But we're going to get you <laughs> in the <laughs> end, no. Um, so it is, a, it is it's a, a license. It's a managed service. Yeah, it's yeah. a managed service offering. Uh, and that's, you know, the beauty of it is that you don't have to worry about 
updating it, you know, keeping the nodes live, anything like that. We don't see the transactional data. We don't manage the nodes or anything like that, but we deploy them, keep them updated, keep them refreshed. Yeah, one of the benefits Ray Farrell's on just talking about the IP revolution, how IP changed the world with the internet, then the web. Mm -hmm. That blockchain has that same kind mm -hmm. of inflection point impact. You mentioned GDPR, that implies re, you know, changing the, uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the values on the blockchain. Well, one of the advantages is immutable. Mm -hmm. How do you handle that? Because if it's already immutable mm -hmm. and encrypted, Mm -hmm. How does GDPR work? Yeah, or does so GDPR care if you why would, if it's encrypted, no one can see it? Then yeah, yeah. yeah, well, you know, blockchain's not about encrypting the data, right? There are some blockchains that do encrypt the data. People get confused with that because they associated the cryptography with it, which links the blocks together. But the data on there is still visible, right? We're working on privacy solutions to mm -hmm. uh, make privacy per transaction. Uh, we're working on GDPR uh, issues right now because that is an issue when you get into a regulated environment, which there isn't really a non-regulated mm -hmm. environment these days you have to worry about these things. You know, blockchain gives you immutability and that gives you the trust, but really blockchain is about trust. It's about yeah. this decentralized trust. And when you think about it in that context, you say, well, if I trust that I want to be able to delete that data and we reach consensus on it and we still maintain the order, mm -hmm. right? The proper order of the bits, which is really what blockchain is doing. It's giving you trust on that ordered bits and I agree as a consensus to delete one of those pieces out of the order bit and we can still yeah. maintain trust of the ordered bits, then that's fine. Now I can't yeah. get into details on it because it's engineering secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, yeah, I was just going to go for that. <laughs> so one of the things I want to ask you guys as engineers, because I think this is one of the things that I see is that um, blockchain is attractive. There's a lot of unknowns hat coming down the pike, but we do know one thing. It's a distributed, decentralized kind of concept mm -hmm. and people like it. I see a new generation of attractive to uh, blockchain, new generation of entrepreneurs, a new generation of young people, engineers, who see use cases that others from old school uh, industry might mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. So you're starting to see, I don't want to say it's not hipster or, or cutting edge, it's just that it's attracting this kind of new generation developer Certainly. or engineer. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that's the case? Why, and, and, and is that right uh, assumption to look at? Because you know, when asked, is blockchain certainly state of the art? Yeah, it's not as fast as a database if I wanted to do something technically. Mm -hmm. That's like saying the internet dial-up was bad, right? But right. what ended up happening after. So, you know, a lot of people are making these arguments, but I see it definitely resonating with young people. Yes. You look at Facebook, who trying to look at a blockchain and moving their entire broken system to blockchain yeah. to try to fix that. So it c you can see all these indicators. What's your thoughts? I think part of it, and I definitely saw this, you know, last Friday and Saturday, I was at E3 up in New York City, right? And it was very much that hipster crowd. And it was really attached to the cryptocurrency phase. Cryptocurrency allowed individuals to make investments, you know, the kind of millennials to make investments. They didn't have to go to an E-Trade or they didn't have to go to some broker. It wasn't caught up in anything. They could, you know, make these bets. And now they can build applications that are directly attached to that currency. They can make up their own currency. They can make up their own value system. You know, you've done some of that with a cube, right? Mm -hmm. We've launched an application that provides value around the content and tokenizes that value. And now I can transfer that value. So it opens up the transfer of that value, the trust of that value. And I think, you know, we are in a generation of trust and transparency. That's what's powering the world right now. It's about trust and transparency. And that's what blockchain gives you. It gives you trust in the system that no one person or no one government owns. And yeah, I think people really thing, like that value. But one thing important is, uh, I mean, we just have to demystify <coughs> this, right? We just have to say this is not about cryptocurrency. That's one mm, thing. Yeah. And what VMware is doing is enterprise blockchain. And, you know, and Mike, you've talked about this. You always say, yeah. you know, blockchain's not going <laughs> to you know, save the world or, uh, you know, it's not going to get rid of poverty, but there's four use cases that we've drilled down to in, mm -hmm. the, in the supply chain realm and there's the financial services. And so those are some of the things we're tackling and I think it's important to like talk about that. And you know, there's these hipsters, every time we go and talk at <laughs> anything with regarding to blockchain, we know a big chunk of people yeah. are there for cryptocurrency and apparently at consensus in New York, they uh, reduced their audience from, I can't remember the numbers. 9, they went 9,000 to 2,000. I, I was there last year. We they kicked, broadcast kicked, out, they kicked out all yeah. the <laughs> cryptocurrency <laughs> people. Yeah. And so it's important yeah. um, to make that distinction. Well, I think the crypto <coughs> winter probably hurt them more than kicking out because last year there was a lot of hype there, but I think the bubble was already burst around February last yep. year. But this brings up a good point. This is something that we've been kind of covering on SiliconANGLE on theCUBE is there's infrastructure dynamic, the engineering yeah. goodness. I think that certainly is intoxicating to think about blockchain as an impact engineering wise. The token conversation brings up utility mm -hmm. of the decentralized. Cryptocurrency, the ICO's initial coin offerings, the fraud part, 
or mm -hmm. you know, regulated part, has caused a lot of problems. So to me, the way I, l I tell people is, look at the ICO kind of scams and fraud, mm -hmm. kind of put a shadow on token economics right. and mm -hmm. blockchain as a technology. So it supply does. chain, no doubt, is great blockchain. That's where you guys are focused. Yes. That's where the enterprise want. Mm -hmm. But you start getting into tokens, tokens is a form of measurement. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think the regulators, to, to your point earlier, has is, is, is caused a lot of problems. So you know, the SEC says, if you've got a utility token and you're selling mm -hmm. it, you it's, it's, an and it's not right. a utility token. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, so it's that's security. stalled a lot of, mm -hmm. I would call those app developers. Yeah, but the app developers are still out there, right? And what's nice is these app developers that are on the side building these unique little applications, they still end up working for these larger companies and driving interesting solutions through, like we're doing with supply chain, like we're doing with financial services, like mm -hmm. what we're doing in telco and media. You look at the people that we're dealing with in these companies, they came from building those applications. Heck, some of our own product managers came from building unique things, mining rigs and mining companies. So they still have that background, they still have that entrepreneurial you know, asset, and that's what's changing these companies. They're driving change to these companies, saying, hey, look, we can use yeah. blockchain for this really unique thing that opens up a brand new business line, you know, for this large corporation. You know, I showed you our tech preview. We did a uh, tech preview at VMworld last year with our uh, blockchain community with a KubeCoin token, kind of total experimental thing. And it was interesting timing, because I think you hit the nail on the head. We, as entrepreneurial developers, had this great uh, application that we right. want to do for the Cube community, but we were stalled by the you know, the crypto winter, <coughs> and you know, we were Apple developers. So there's many use cases of, of scenarios like that, that's kind of people are kind of halfway between A to Z, A to B. Mm -hmm. What's your advice to, to us or folks like us who are out there who want to get the projects back on track? Um, what, what, what should we and application do? do they, should they refocus on the infrastructure piece? What's your advice for the marketplace? It's, it's so early. <laughs> it's it's so <laughs> early to actually really comment on that. I mean, I would say just keep at it because you never know. It's I feel like we're so early in the game that um, though we can solve world hunger, there's so many use cases and applications that come out of it, and we just have to keep going. And I think the developer community is what's going to make this successful. You know, and, and even emerging standards. I think that's one thing is standards across yeah. you know these blockchains like we don't have that right now and that's something we really need to need to do yeah. and uh, and well i just we feel program like we in ethereum so the question is is that a bad choice there's a lot of cognitive dissonance around do i have the right tool that's what i was just going to bring <laughs> up is that you know you uh, brought up the point of you're an app developer and you become stalled you know in your project and we see that exact same thing happening in the enterprise. We go into mm -hmm. account after account where they've chosen some blockchain solution that's out there, and they become what I call a stalled pioneer. They've gone through, they've developed that application, but they either hit a scalability issue and then you know throughput or the number of nodes. Mm -hmm. They hit an operations thing. You know, operations comes in and says, "Whoa, how are you going to do an audit on that thing? What about data sovereignty? What about GDPR? Yeah. What about this? What it's about a lot that?" Of hassles. Right? How am I actually going to operate it uh, inside of my environment? You know, what's the security side? So it's really around scalability. Uh, it's around operations. It's around security. Those are the three things we hit on over and over and over again with these stalled pioneers. So those are the accounts that we go into and rescue them essentially, right? We say, we can provide you the scale, we can provide you the throughput, we can provide you the operations. For 20 years, VMware has been taking large complex distributed systems and making you operate them at scale in an enterprise setting. We're the experts at it. So we're doing that with blockchain now and allowing your blockchain projects to succeed. And Just rebooting all pioneers. that. Good term. <coughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Radio, what's the feedback here? Obviously, you got got the demo, what's been some of the peer review? Give us the, the 411 on peer review here. People liking what's going on? I think the demo um, really um, uh, talked to people. It was relatable, mm -hmm. right? It was a social good uh, demo. I think it really impacted them. Um, but some of the cool stuff we're doing is also like in the financial services side, you know, we've got more interesting stuff on the supply chain. So the feedback's been great. Uh, a lot of focus is on VMware blockchain which is also cool. We didn't mm -hmm. quite have that last year at radio. We had everyone running off in different directions. So now it's VMware blockchain. And what Mike talked about as stall pioneers is, you know, we were seeing scalability throughput. Our numbers, and you know, we talked about it at VMworld Barcelona. Mm -hmm. Our numbers are looking really great. And you know, we're, we're optimizing, pushing our platform so we could get to 
you know, perhaps the PayPal <laughs> <laughs> numbers, right? Yeah. And someday Visa. Yeah, you got to have high availability, you guys know scale. Yeah. You happy where you are right now? Oh, very happy where we are <coughs> right now. I mean, we've got great customers, great feedback, you know, great solution that's solving real world problems. You know, engineers like doing two things, shipping code and solving stuff that's going to help the world, uh, at least here at VMware, that's our culture, right? And, uh, and we're able to do that uh, day in and day out. And VMware blockchain is a cornerstone to that and that's what makes people happy. Mike Bertin, we'll be following your journey. Great to check in, great to hear the progress. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on the great demo, real use cases in supply chain. We'll be following you guys and keep in touch. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Absolutely, thank you for Thank the time. you. Thank you. Sean here with Lisa Martin, here in San Francisco for theCUBE coverage of radio, the top engineering event where they all come together internally within VMware. One of a few press outlets here, theCUBE, bringing exclusive coverage. Thanks for watching. <laughs>